A very good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Zahir Palace senior royal family members and officials, a number of parents, and outstanding students from various educational stages. The attendees greeted His Majesty, who welcomed them, noting that these meetings are one of the most important pillars of Bahrain society and one of the authentic Arab customs stemming from Bahraini heritage, which the forefathers were keen to preserve for many decades for generations. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة أيها السيدات والسادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته يشرفنا أن نرحب بكم أجمل ترحيب في هذا اللقاء الطيب وخير ما نبدأ به the event started with the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran. Ali Salah Umar. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Ar-Rahman. علم القرآن 
خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض وضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريحان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان خلق الإنسان من صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجان من مارج من نار فبأي آلاء بكما تكذبان صدق الله العظيم بارك يتفضل سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة His Majesty the King then delivered the following speech المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه بإلقاء كلمة بهذه المناسبة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يسعدنا الترحيب بكم وبنخبة من الوجوه الفتية المتواجدة معنا اليوم لنبارك لهم ما حققوه من تفوق دراسي لافت إلى جانب تميز عدد منهم في المسابقات العلمية والبحثية على المستويين الإقليمي والدولي ولا عجب في مثل هذه النتائج المبهرة فأبناءنا وبناتنا الطلبة هم نتاج لجودة التعليم النظامي في البلاد بمؤسساته الفاعلة والمواكبة للتطلعات الوطنية ومنذ أن انطلقت مسيرته قبل أكثر من مئة عام بتوفيق من المولى عز وجل ونحمد الله على ثروة العقول التي تمتلكها بلادنا ونعتبرها جوهر ثرائها الحضاري وأساس ريادتها وازدهارها ومنبعا لرقي مجتمعها المحب والملتزم بالتعايش الإنساني المتحضر بين كافة أطيافه وأديانه ولن نبالغ بالقول بأننا بنور العلم نحارب كل فكر متطرف معاديا للسلام وهو ما تؤكده مواقف البحرين الثابتة والداعية للسلام العادل واحترام علاقات حسن الجوار وكما جاء في القمة العربية الأخيرة وسنستمر برفع كل أشكال التصعيد ومحاولات الاستعداء والتحريض الذي يتعارض مع قيمنا الدينية والإنسانية النبيلة ويؤلمنا أن نرى أهوال الحروب والنزاعات غير المبررة في العديد من الدول 
بما تجلبه من دمار وانتهاك لكل حق إنساني ونتمنى على قياداتها مراجعة مواقفها وأن تسأل نفسها عما حققته لشعوبها وما الذي وفرت لهم لتخفيف من معاناتهم وليتمتعوا بحياة كريمة تلبي تطلعاتهم وتؤمن لهم كافة احتياجاتهم من صحة وتعليم وسكن وعمل لائق نحمد الله على نعمة وهدايته وندعو الله بأن يعم الأمن والسلام في كل مكان وأن يحفظ لنا أمن بلادنا واستقرارها بتكاتفكم الوطني ومواقفكم المشرفة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وها هم اليوم يتشرفون بالسلام على جلالتكم الطلب الأوائل على مستوى مدارس مملكة البحرين الحكومية زهراء عبدالله الأسود حائزة على معدل 99.7% مدرسة الشروق الثانوية للبنات حنين أحمد هيات حائزة على معدل 99.7% مدرسة سار الثانوية للبنات حوراء فاضل الخياط حائزة على معدل 99.7% مدرسة جد حفص الثانوية الطلبة المتميزون من المدارس الحكومية ممن حققوا إنجازات إقليمية ودولية بتول سيد علوي مهدي حسين حائزة على الميدالية الذهبية في مناهزات اللغة العربية اليازي سعيد بن دينة منيرة محمد البصميط فاطمة جاسم قاسم حمزة وليد السيد محمد جمعة حمد عبد الله عبد الهادي عبد الله الطلبة الأوائل على مستوى مدارس مملكة البحرين الخاصة لما بسام المعراج مدرسة بيان البحرين مئة في المئة زين خالد الرئيس مدرسة بيان البحرين مئة في المئة عبد الرحمن عبد الرحيم أحمد السيد مدرسة ابن خلدون الوطنية مئة في المئة عبد الله محمد عبد الرحيم مدرسة ابن خلدون الوطنية مئة في المئة طلبت جامعة البحرين المتميزون الذين حققوا إنجازات إقليمية ودولية رحمة ميرزا حسن حسن تخصص الهندسة بمعدل تراكمي أربعة من أربعة يوسف خالد يعقوب القطان تخصص الهندسة بمعدل تراكمي ثلاثة فاصل اثنين وستين الطلبة المتميزون من المؤسسات التعليمية الخاصة طلبت جامعة البحرين الطبية الكلية الملكية للجراحين بإيرلندا خالد حميد أحمد عسل إبراهيم عبد علي صاحب الجلالة أيها الحضور الكريم كلمة سعادة الدكتور محمد بن مبارك وزير التربية والتعليم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak, then delivered a speech expressing gratitude to His Majesty the King for welcoming the students. He said that the educational family expresses gratitude to His Majesty for his continuous care for the education sector and for the impact it had on the development of this sector. 
He added that this honor reflects His Majesty's wise approach to communicate with people from various sectors. He also said that the educational family is honored by the support given to the education sector by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister, through educational projects embodying the vision of His Majesty the King. He said that the educational family congratulates His Majesty on the start of the new school year in light of what Bahrain's government has prepared, headed by His Royal Highness, which will have a positive impact in supporting the efforts of the Ministry of Education. The Minister thanked His Majesty and His Royal Highness for their support and follow-up. ويجسد نهجكم الحكيم الذي نستلهم منه ونستنير به في خدمة الوطن من مختلف المواقع إنني يا صاحب الجلالة باسمي ونيابة عن الأسرة التعليمية والتربوية كافة لو أعبر لجلالتكم المعظم بأصدق العبارات والمعاني عن العرفان العميق لما تولونه من اهتمام موصول ورعاية سامية للأسرة التربوية وهو ما كان له بالغ الأثر في تطور قطاع التعليم ومثل خير حافز لمضاعفة جهودنا نحو الارتقاء بالنظام التعليمي وتحسين مخرجاته يزيدنا فخرا واعتزازا ما يليه سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله من دعم لقطاع التعليم من خلال المشاريع والبرامج التعليمية تجسيدا لرؤية جلالتكم حفظكم الله ورعاكم أن تتبوأ مملكة البحرين الريادة في مختلف المجالات وفي مقدمتها قطاع التعليم إن الأسرة التربوية لتهنئ جلالتكم حفظكم الله ببدء السنة الدراسية الجديدة في ظل ما هيأته حكومتكم الموقرة برئاسة سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله مما سيكون له الأثر الإيجابي في دعم جهود وزارة التربية والتعليم نحو القيام بمسؤولياتها على الوجه الأكمل سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة بفضل رؤية جلالتكم أيدكم الله وبدعم ومتابعة من صاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله تستلهم وزارة التربية والتعليم من توجيهاتكم السديدة وتطلعاتكم السامية ما يعزز جهودها الدؤوبة لمزيد من تطوير النظام التعليمي إن استقبال جلالتكم حفظكم الله لأبنائكم وبناتكم الطلبة المتفوقين سيترك بالغ الأثر الجميل والراسخ في نفوسهم أمد الدهر سائلين المولى العلي القدير أن يحفظ جلالتكم ويرعاكم وأن يجعلكم ذخرا وسندا لوطننا العزيز وأن يديم نعمة الأمن والأمان على مملكة البحرين وشعبها الوفي لجلالتكم إنه سميع مجيب الدعاء والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته His Majesty the King said that in light of the continuous patronage of the educational process with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, Bahrain honours outstanding citizens. On the occasion of a World Teachers' Day, which falls on October 5th, His Majesty congratulated them and expressed appreciation for the educational role played by teachers in spreading knowledge, building values and promoting citizenship. He emphasized that Bahrain will continue to support the educational process. The attendees expressed happiness to meet with His Majesty, who is keen on meeting all Bahraini citizens, which reflects the cohesion and close communication between the leadership and the people of the kingdom, and enhance loyalty and belonging to the um, homeland and its leadership. They praised the support of His Majesty of the citizens' affairs and the kingdom's achievements during the prosperous era of His Majesty, over 25 years of civilized and developmental achievements at all levels, thanks to His Majesty's visions. They also pray to Allah Almighty to bless His Majesty with good health, happiness and success to continue leading the development of the country and fulfill the aspirations of its people.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attaches great importance to education as a key pillar of the comprehensive development process. His support and the government's continuous interest in developing and supporting education contributes to building Bahraini generations capable of playing an important role in the kingdom's future civilizational development. Let's have a listen. His Majesty the King has always believed that education is the foundation on which all national achievements are built and the main pillar on which the comprehensive development process is based. The support for the development of the educational process and the government's interest came to achieve the desired goals and aspirations. Educational development in the Kingdom of Bahrain began from its national foundation and its honorable educational heritage that exceeds a century. The Kingdom has worked to strengthen its educational programs and curricula by embedding them with national, civilizational and humanitarian principles, citizenship values, the spirit of belonging and responsibility, human rights, tolerance and coexistence, in addition to its efforts to keep pace with the latest global trends in mathematics, science, knowledge economy, digital skills and others. I was honored today uh, to be hosted by His Majesty the King on behalf of uh, releasing a research article uh, displaying the relationship between hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, and the development of dementia, which is the first study of its kind to be, re to be released in the world uh, during our time of writing the paper. It was really an honor to meet him today, and we hope to strive in the future to always serve our nation and raise the name of the country. During the prosperous era of His Majesty the King, many major educational projects and institutions have been launched to find that education in the kingdom has become a distinctive feature in the region and an example to be followed in terms of development, keeping pace with developments and achievements. Students graduating from educational institutions in the kingdom have become at the level of their peers from advanced countries and are equipped with knowledge, skills and experience that qualify them to join the best universities and attain all jobs. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Order 38 of this year calling on the Shura and Representatives Councils to convene. The order stipulates the following. Article 1. Both the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives shall be called to meet on the afternoon of Sunday, October 13th of this year to open the third session of the sixth legislative term. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Minister of Interior, Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Information and Communication Technology, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and officials from agencies that have contributed to Bahrain's ranking of 18th place globally in the e-government development index at Gudaybia Palace. The ranking was reported in the UN e-government survey 24. His Royal Highness affirmed Team Bahrain's efforts in advancing the kingdom's achievements across all sectors in line with the far-reaching vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's commitment to advancing its telecommunications and information technology sector, recognizing it as a key driver of digital transformation across the government. He also expressed pride in Bahrain's progress in the Development Index, placing it among the highest ranked nations globally. His Royal Highness said that this achievement is a testament to the progress made in Bahrain's government services. He highlighted the importance of intensifying efforts to enhance the capabilities, quality and integration of government services through modern technology, ensuring the sustainability of government works teams. His Royal Highness underscored the importance of further developing programs and initiatives to support Bahrain's digital transformation process, ensuring it meets current and future needs for the benefit of of all. And for their part, the Minister of Interior and the officials expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness, noting his unwavering support for efforts aimed at serving the Kingdom and citizens. They reiterated their commitment to advancing Bahrain's development in line with the far-reaching vision of His Majesty the King and the directives of His Royal Highness aimed at ensuring progress and prosperity for the country. Bahrain achieved 18th place in the UN e-government survey 24, an improvement of 36 positions, placing it among the global leaders in e-government services. In 2024 report, Bahrain achieved progress in all main and sub-indicators ranking first global in the Technology Adoption Index within digital services, with significant progress across all sub-indicators of digital readiness. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the ISA Ben Salman Education 
Foundation Charitable Trust and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, along with senior officials, also attended this meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Vice Chancellor and CEO Registrar of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, Dublin, Professor Cathal Kelly, along with officials from RCSI at Gudaybia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of investing in the education of Bahraini citizens in line with the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He affirmed the Kingdom's commitment to advancing its medical sector, ensuring it adheres to best practices, modern science and global expertise. His Royal Highness highlighted the role of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, Medical University of Bahrain, in advancing higher ed medical education over the past 20 years. He noted that the institution has helped groom and train medical professionals to meet the needs of the health sector. His Royal Highness wished RCSI continued success in its educational endeavors, which contributes to Bahrain's overall development. For their part, Professor Kelly and RCSI officials expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness' support of Bahrain's medical sector, both educationally and practically. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Education Charitable Trust, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkeen, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and senior officials also attended this meeting. The Legislative Authority held a joint meeting with government representatives to discuss the latest developments for those who have joined the Home Projects Programme, Khatwa, who have included previous periods of service based on optional insurance. The meeting was chaired by Rep Representative Council Speaker Ahmed al Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh, and Minister of Shura and Parliamentary Affairs, Ghanem al buainin in the presence of the Minister of Legal Affairs, Yusuf Khalaf, Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Ahmed Al Malki and Minister of Information Dr. Ramzan Al Nuhaimi. The speaker praised the keenness of the legislative and executive authorities to consolidate cooperation to reach consensual visions on national files. He expressed appreciation for the efforts of the government to keep the legislative authority informed of developments and details related to citizens registered in the Khatwa program. And for his part, the Shura Council Chairman commended the efforts of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs in studying the cases of all members of the Khatwa program and reviewing all documents to ensure that they meet the legal procedures and regulatory requirements. During the meeting, the government delegation reviewed the results of the study on the cases of all programs members who added previous service periods based on the optional retirement insurance to ensure that they meet the legal and regulatory requirements, noting that governmental and judicial measures have been taken in accordance with the law to consolidate the principles of justice, control and accountability. The government team reviewed 1,413 cases related to the Khatwa program, focusing on the compliance of employees with the program's rules and procedures. They found that 1,094 cases submitted documents and observations with a response rate of 77%. They also found that 133 cases practiced productive home activities during their service periods, complying with the conditions regulating their inclusion of previous services periods. The team said that 1,280 cases will be referred to the Social Insurance Authority for legal action due to violations. The meeting stressed the importance of maintaining the sustainability of pension funds and ensuring the integrity of pension disbursement within the framework of regulating laws. The team reported that legal action has been taken against government employees who violated the Khatwa program's laws and procedures with cases being presented to the judiciary. They stress the executive authority's keenness to develop cooperation with the legislative authority to achieve the desired visions at all levels.
As part of the Ministry of Interior's Community Partnership Strategy and in order to enhance communication with all components of Bahraini society, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, met with an elite group of Bahraini citizens from various segments of society. The Minister of Interior first welcomed the attendees and thanked them for attending this meeting, which comes within the framework of integrated community work to enhance the cooperation and cohesion and preserve social cohesion based on the national constants and noble human values that unite Bahraini society. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ashab al-Sumu al-Ma'ali wa al-Sa'ada al-Hudur al-Kiram. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yatibu li an al-taqi bikum fi hadha al-jam' al-tayyib al-mubarak. Al-ladhi nastash'ar fiih jami'an al-na'am al-lati an'am Allah biha alayna. والتي أصبحت جزءا لا يتجزأ من واقعنا الوطني بفضل حكمة سيري حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه ومتابعة ودعم الحكومة الموقرة برئاسة صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله وفي مقدمة تلك النعم ما تعيش مملكة البحرين من أمن وطمأنينة واستقرار وحياة كريمة ورعاية شاملة وتطور ونماء والعيش في محيطنا الاجتماعي الذي يتسم بالكرم المتأصل واحترام القريب والبعيد وروح التسامح والأصالة والمحب وهذه هي ملامح راسخة في الشخصية البحرينية الغنية بالقيم والعادات الموروثة والتي تستوجب علينا المحافظة عليها والتمسك بها الإخوة الأعزاء قبل أيام كان لي تصريح ركزت فيه على وحدة الصف والروح الوطنية والمسؤولة عن الأمن والسلم الأهلي والاجتماعي في ظل هذه الظروف الدقيقة التي تمر بها المنطقة واسمحوا لي هنا أيها الأخوة أن أحيي فيكم روح الانضباط والمسؤولية فالحكمة الوطنية ركيزة أساسية في توطيد عائم منظومة السلم المجتمعي وهو الأمر الذي يتطلب من الجميع التحلي ورفض أي محاولات للخروج على ثوابتنا الوطنية أما بعض المظاهر المخالفة للقانون والتي قد لاحظها البعض منكم فإن كانت بسبب الاستماع أو الاستجابة للتحريضات الخارجية أو أنها وليدة أي ولاءات للخارج فليكن واضحا أن الولاء للخارج خيانة وطن وهي مخالفة صريحة للقانون نتعامل معها بمنطق الدولة الحافظة للحقوق والمحافظة على سيادة القانون ومن الأجدى أن نتعامل معها لنطفئها وهي في بداياتها عملا بمفهوم الاحتواء المجتمعي وانني اتوقع منكم ايها الاخوه الاعزاء وانتم المدركون لاهميه المحافظه على الامن والسلم الاهلي بتعزيز حضوركم الاجتماعي المؤثر سواء بالراي المسؤول او تقديم النصح او المشوره والتوعيه حفاظا على استقرار الوطن وأني أختم كلامي بالقول بأن الوطن لمن ينتمي إليه ويفتخر بهويته الوطنية شكرا
After that, a joint dialogue took place between the Minister of Interior and some attendees in which the Minister was briefed on community views related to the prospects of National and its role in dealing efficiency with surrounding challenges and dangers through the national spirit, community sincerity and readiness for positive interaction and strengthening integrated efforts, which would enhance national cohesion. The attendees highly valued His Majesty's affirmation and pride in the interconnectivity of the people of Bahrain, their solidarity and awareness of shared responsibility in laying the foundations of the civilizational renaissance. They also praised His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister's affirmation of the responsible national spirit that characterizes the people of Bahrain and his confidence in the community's awareness and responsible spirit, thanking the Minister of Interior for his keenness to communicate with community members and work to enhance partnership and solidarity to address all that would strengthen security and public safety. They also praise the efforts and sacrifices of security personnel to preserve community security and safeguard national gains. Attorney General, Attorney General Dr. Ali Ben Fadel Bouainin attended the 29th annual meeting of the International Association of Prosecutors held in Azerbaijan. Al Bouainin presented a working paper on the protection of victims and witnesses and reviewed the legislative and institutional system for protection in Bahrain and the powers granted to the public prosecution and the court in this regard in accordance with the provisions of the Criminal Procedure Code and the protection procedures stipulated in the anti trafficking persons law and the protection from domestic violence law. In addition to the uses of technology in criminal lawsuit procedures which can be resorted to include victims and witnesses in protection as permitted by national law to use electronic means in the stages of gathering evidence, investigating and trial and hearing witnesses using these technologies. Al Bouhainin signed a memorandum of understanding between Bahrain's public prosecution office and its counterpart in Azerbaijan in the field of judicial cooperation for the purpose of exchanging information and innovative strategies related to the effective administration of criminal justice, organized joint training and exchanging legal research, especially with regard to developing judicial systems. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelati Falzayani, participated in the Third Asia Cooperation Dialogue Summit in Doha, held under the chairmanship of the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. Al Zayani gave a speech emphasizing the importance of peace in resolving conflicts, particularly the ongoing Palestinian issue. He emphasized the need for a just, comprehensive, and sustainable peace in the Middle East, as confirmed by the Bahrain summit in May. This summit called for an international peace conference to establish an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital and demanded immediate cessation of the war on Gaza, protection of civilians, release of hostages and detainees and facilitation of humanitarian aid delivery. The minister also highlighted the threat of the war on Gaza's expansion to Lebanon and its potential threats to regional security and peace. He emphasized the importance of strategic partnerships between Asian countries, highlighting their development achievements and economic growth as key factors in fostering joint cooperation. Mr. Zayani praised the Asian Cooperation Dialogue Sports Diplomacy as a key pillar for strengthening relations and enhancing sports role in development. He said that Bahrain is committed to enhancing sports role in development and strengthening partnership in line with the Asian Cooperation Vision 2030. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, participated in the extraordinary meeting of the GCC Ministerial Council, which was held in Doha. The Council reviewed the developments in the region, including the escalation in Lebanon and Gaza, serious violations in the West Bank, and threats to Al Aqsa Mosque and religious places. The Council condemned the escalation and warned of its serious repercussions extending to international peace and security. It called for self restraint, refraining from violence and preferring dialogue. It also affirmed the GCC's support for the Lebanese people and called for urgent humanitarian support to Lebanon. 
The Council stressed the need to implement Security Council resolutions and the TAIF agreement to restore permanent security and stability in Lebanon. The Council also affirmed the GCC's support to the Palestinian people, condemning the Israeli escalation in Gaza and the West Bank. They called for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, ending the siege on the Strip and releasing detainees and hostages. The Council emphasized the importance of opening crossings immediately, without conditions, and ensuring the safe delivery of relief aid. The Council also praised the constructive role played by GCC countries with their strategic partners, particularly the US, in reducing escalation, enhancing security and ensuring maritime navigation in the region. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Al Noaimi, received the British Ambassador to Bahrain, Alistair Long, who introduced a delegation of the participants in the Regional Communication Conference for officials and communication workers in British embassies in the Middle East and North Africa region, which was held in Bahrain in coordination and cooperation with Bahrain's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and organized by the British Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. The Minister welcomed the delegation and noted the historic ties between Bahrain and the UK, which witnessed growth at all levels under the patronage and attention of His Majesty the King and His Majesty King Charles III. Dr. Noaimi said that Bahrain is proud of its civilizational approach, which is based on promoting the values of tolerance, peaceful coexistence and respect for pluralism and cultures. He said that this approach stems from the vision of His Majesty and with the directives of the government headed by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Prime Minister. The delegation visited the news center studio at the ministry where they were briefed on the news and media content provided by the latest modern technologies and advanced technology and praised Bahrain's advanced media system. The Minister of Information highlighted the importance of strategic media partnership in today's world world as it faces exceptional circumstances that require effective communication. He emphasized Bahrain's vision of establishing security, stability and peace at regional and international levels, believing that peace is the fundamental pillar for collective prosperity and sustainable hope. The ambassador thanked the minister for the opportunity to meet the, with the delegation, highlighting Bahrain's openness to different cultures and rich culture that encourages dialogue and cooperation. The delegation also visited the National Communications Center, where CEO Ahmed Al Arafi presented on the center's role in unifying government media discourse in Bahrain. The presentation discussed the responsibilities and mechanisms of the center to ensure a comprehensive, effective, and constructive government communication system. Um, we've been absolutely bowled over by the hospitality and the welcome that we had from, from yourselves, from the Bahraini MFA and from our colleagues here who work at the embassy in Bahrain. Um, just this morning we've been to the National Communication Centre and uh, we've also uh, you know, enjoyed some amazing cultural events, including uh, Fatma Saeed, the Egyptian soprano, who we saw. Um, it's been a great experience here in Bahrain, um, experiencing the culture, and um, the people have been so welcoming, and it's been a great experience getting to know um, and understand a different um, kind of environment for the comms aspect and on communications in general. We've had a wonderful time here in Bahrain. Um, the hospitality has been incredible so far. It was great to call on the uh, Ministry of Communications, the Government Communication Centre earlier on. And um, yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for their hospitality so far. In implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister to develop 500 services in 24 government entities, the Supreme Council for Environment completed developing 27 e-services as part of efforts to improve the quality of government services provided by the Council to citizens and investors. On this occasion, the Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Dena, affirmed the Supreme Council for Environment's keenness to keep pace with the digital transformation in providing environmental services and to develop them. 
He said that the services developed by the council included 100% e-transformation, reducing the submission steps to a maximum of four, standardizing service information published in all channels for 27 services, accelerating the service level agreement for a range of services, improving the interface and user experience, and simplifying procedures for other services. He said that the services included 11 for licenses related to the Directorate of Control and Environment protection, eight for licenses related to the Directorate of Environmental Assessment and Licensing, seven services for licenses in the Directorate of Radiation and one in the Directorate of Biodiversity. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhrou, conducted a field visit to Craft Boat Factory, H. Aldan Boat Factory and Harayed Factory for Industry in Mahamar Industrial Area as part of the Ministry's efforts to follow up of all developments in the industrial sector and to learn about its current aspirations and plans. Mr. Fahrou stressed Bahrain's keenness to continue supporting the industrial sector and harnessing all capabilities to develop its development paths as it is one of the priority sectors. He pointed out the importance of continuing work in cooperation with relevant institutions to implement the objectives of the Industrial Sector Strategy 2226 on increasing the contribution of the industrial sector to the gross domestic product and increasing exports. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs emphasized the crucial role of the religious pulpit in promoting development, security and stability in societies through its role in wisdom, knowledge and unity. The Council urges religious leaders to be rational and wise in addressing sensitive situations in the region and the world. They should commit to unifying people, protect the pulpit from conflicts and avoid exploiting it for partisan or sectarian interests. The Council emphasizes the urgent need for unity within the Islamic nation, promoting coexistence and brotherhood based on religion. It calls for responsibility for wrong choices, divisions, conflicts and polarizations and urges unity among Muslims, including scholars, leaders, journalists, media professionals and educated elites.